OK, the B SI base quantities. Uh, the SI system is an internationally agreed system of units, measurements as well. And um, we've agreed that there are seven base quantities. They are as follows. They are the kilogram, uh, the unit of mass. It's the unit of length, which is measured in metres. The unit of time, which is measured in seconds. The unit of current, which is measured in amps. The unit of temperature, which is measured in Kelvin. The unit of uh, the amount of substance, which is the mole or mole. And the unit of uh, light brightness, which is the candela. Okay, the candela. Now, you don't need to know this one for the A level, but you certainly need to know these here. And... All the other units that you know can actually be expressed with these units instead. Okay, and those are called derived units. So these are the base units. And then other units, such as joule, watt, uh, ohm, are all derived units. Okay, so which of the following is not an SI base quantity? Right, well, mass is an SI base quantity, so that is the wrong answer. Length is an SI quantity, so that is the wrong answer. Charge is not an SI base quantity, you can see that charge is not there, so that is the right answer. And the final question is that time is also a derived unit. There we go, the time in measured in seconds. So the correct answer is C. Right, uh, work is force times distance. You need to show that work can be expressed or written in the base unit. So you know that work is basically the same as energy. And energy, as you know, the unit of energy is the joule, which has the symbol J. Okay. Now, the way we work out the energy is by doing energy is uh, given by force multiplied by distance. You just need to know these things, guys. Force, of course, is MA. Uh, the distance is measured. Uh, and So I can replace F with MA and end up with MAD or MAD. So energy or work is given by MAD. What's the unit of mass? It's the kilogram. The unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. And the unit of distance is the meter. So if we now put these together, you end up with kilograms. You've got two meters, so that's meters squared. You'd simply add up the indices, these things at the top, or the powers. And S minus two is the final one. So we're looking for that answer there, which is here. Brilliant, there we go. So that's the right answer, answer D. Right, number three, link the derived units on the right with the more familiar ones on the left. Okay, let's try the volt first of all. Okay, let's try the volt. Um, right, the, the volt is defined as one joule per coulomb. Okay, it's one joule uh, per coulomb, or JC minus one. Now, neither of those are, are base units, uh, but we do know that it's therefore going to be E over Q is how you work out the, uh, the, the volt. Well, E, as we just worked out a minute ago, is given by force times distance. Uh, charge, of course, you may know that Q equals IT, uh, the unit, which is the current multiplied by time. I remember it as quit. Q equals IT. E equals force times distance. Again, force times distance should be written down as, uh, well, force is mass times acceleration, MA, then multiplied by the D, the distance. And IT, the unit of current is amps. The unit of time is seconds. OK, so uh, let's keep going a little bit further. The um, mass is measured in kilograms. Uh, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. MS minus 2. And the unit of distance is meters. We've already said the unit of current is A. But because it's underneath the line, it means it's dividing it. So you need to write it down as A minus 1. That tells us that the the amps were underneath the line and the same goes for the seconds that should be minus one uh, now if you notice we've got we've got two loads of seconds there and two loads of uh, masses here as well so we need to simplify this so we've got one kg we've got two meters so that's m squared we've got s we've got s minus two and s minus one so that makes it s minus three and then a minus one so this is the unit of voltage. That's what a volt looks like, which if you notice, this is that answer there. So the volt goes to here. Cool. Let's look at the watt. Well, uh, the watt can be defined, there's several ways of defining the watt, which is power equals uh, voltage times current, and it also equals uh, work done divided by time. And we've got to think as to which the one we want to use here, uh, work done divided by time. And as it turns out, is this one's quite easy to do because we've just worked out the volt. We know that the volt is kg 
m2 s minus 3 multiply it by so a, a minus 1 we know that's a volt and then we need to multiply it by current again times a this time it's to the power 1 and if you notice the a minus 1 the 1 they just cancel each other out so what you're left with the unit of power is kg m2 s minus 3 which is that one there so the what goes here what goes there which means then therefore that the ohm must go up here and the way we can work that out of course is to use uh, r equals uh, v divided by i so the resistance is measured in, in ohms uh, so ohms equals uh, the unit of voltage so we said a minute ago that the voltage was this here so it's kg m to s minus 3 a minus 1 and then we're going to divide that by the current which again is a minus 1 so that would end up with another a minus 1 here and of course you can see we've got two a minus 1 so that's going to end up as kg m2 s minus 3 a minus 2 and of course that is that answer. Now, to be honest, you didn't have to do what I just did then because you, it was a process of elimination. I would have told you that's the right answer. But it's good to check anyway, and it's good practice. Show that impulse, which is equal to force times time, and momentum, which is mass times velocity, have the same units. Okay, so we know that force times time, we've been told, is the same as a mass times velocity. If they've got the same units, they must be equal to each other. We've said that force is mass times acceleration multiplied by time, and that must equal mass times velocity. Right, the unit of mass is kilograms, the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared, the unit of time is seconds, and that will equal the kilogram, the unit of velocity is meter per second, there we go, ms minus one. And if you notice, the s minus two will cancel, uh, will, uh, will cancel this s one, so we end up with kg uh, ms minus 1 and of course it equals kg m s minus 1 we have proven it we have shown it to be the case uh, qed which i think quad erat demonstrandum that's what qed stands for it means i have shown it to be i believe okay so that's your proof okay we end up with m2 s minus 2 and then we need to move what's on the bottom here upwards so that will therefore make the m and uh, sorry ignore that equals That'll make it m uh, minus 1, and the s will become positive when it moves to the top, so s2. So if you notice, that cancels that, and the minus 1 will cancel one of the, the 2 here, so we end up with meters equaling meters. Well, that's reassuring. So again, once again, we have shown it to be true. Right, um, let's have a look at this one here. So resistance R of a wire, read it by yourself. Okay, uh, so what we have, we need to do is to show that uh, the ohm meter is a right unit of resistivity. So we need to say that ohm meter, uh, which equals resistivity, uh, must equal uh, R A over um, over L. Okay. Well, this should be fairly straightforward, I guess. Um, Right, well, what's the unit of resistance? Well, the unit of resistance is the ohm. The unit of area is meters squared. And the unit of length is meters. And, of course, if you simplify this further, you end up with ohm meters squared m minus 1. If you add up the indices, you end up with ohm meters, which is what we had to prove, basically. Okay, so, again, that would be a QED. You've shown it to be true. Right, express ohm meters in terms of base units. Ah, so we need to change uh, ohm meters into, you know, the um, uh, kg, mn, ms, all that sort of stuff. So uh, what is the ohm then? Well, if we know the ohm is R equals V over I, that's how we define the ohm, voltage over current. Uh, and we know that voltage is basically, this bit here is E over Q. Uh, so that's going to be... Uh, I'm just looking at the top for now. 
The bottom's quite easy because that's just the amp. That would be an easy to work out. That's no problem at all. So we know the amp's at the bottom. The top is E over Q. And energy is force times um, distance. Times distance. So I'll, I'll do this across here so it's a bit clearer. E over Q is going to be the same as writing down uh, energy is force times distance. And Q equals IT. That's charge is current times time. And of course, we said before that F equals MA, so you've got MAD. The current is uh, IT. And uh, mass is measured in kilograms. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Uh, the current is measured in amps, so because it's divided, it's A minus 1. And the time, it, T, is measured in seconds, so that's S minus 1 as well. I'll just shove this all up here just to. So we know where we're going. Okay, I've run out of space, unfortunately. So uh, that is that is the going back to R equals V over I. We've just worked out that V is kg m two s minus three a minus one. And if you notice, we now need to divide this by an amp as well. So you're going to end up with it being a minus one there again so I can get rid of that and then when I simplify that down I end up with k g m two s minus three a minus two and that's your answer for ohm meters cool well that's it I hope you find that useful see you later I'll leave you to read this uh, yourself um, well, what we need to know is, um, let's make sure, is that basically we need to show that the unit of resistivity is the ohm meter. Okay, so uh, the resistivity uh, has got the unit, uh, let's see, has got the unit of ohm meter. We need to show that that is correct. Well, the formula for resistivity is Ra over L. Uh, that is uh, ohms. Uh, multiplied by meters squared, then divided by meters, so that's going to be m minus 1. Uh, so now you're therefore left with uh, ohm meters, ohm uh, meters, uh, because the minus 1 takes away that there. And if you notice, we've proven it by doing, uh, showing that. So that again is another uh, Q E D. Right, let's get rid of these uh, sketches first of all. So I'll go to screen, uh, erase the pen. Right, the next one here is that we need to show uh, what ohm meters are in base units. Okay, in other words, the kilogram meters, second, and stuff like that. Right. So um, we know that R is V over A, V over I. Uh, so we're going to look at this one here. We're going to look at uh, that one there. We know that that is uh, V over I. So I could do that. V over I. Um, I'm going to find out what V equals. Well, V is E over Q, uh, which is energy over charge. Uh, that's going to be equal to energy is given by force times distance. That's how you work out energy. And that will equal mass times acceleration, which is F equals MA, multiplied by distance. The bottom half, uh, Q equals IT. That's the formula for uh, the charge is IT. And I can just put that across here as well. Now, if we now substitute the units in there, the unit of mass is kilograms. The unit of acceleration is ms minus 2. The unit of distance is a meter. And then uh, we have got divided by current. So that'd be a minus 1. When we put it up here, it's a minus 1. And then time s minus 1. Um, again, remember this is the reason that these are negative is because they're under the line. So if we simplify that, we now end up with um, uh, v. The if v is going to be uh, kg uh, m. Let's look at all the m's. We've got one m there, two m's there. So that's going to be m two, um, and then we've got the threes. We've got one, two, three. Uh, s minus three. And then uh, we've got A minus 1. So that's that's the volts. And then 
in order to find out, uh, we said the ohm is voltage divided by current. So this again is measured in amps. So we need to divide this by amps, which should have the effect of putting another A minus 1 there. So now we end up that the ohm is basically kg m2 s minus 3 a minus 2. But we need to know what the ohm meter is. So if we do ohm meters, it means we've, had to mul we've multiplied that side by meters, so we must do the same to this side. So we end up with kg m3 s minus 3 a minus 2. And uh, those are the base units. Uh, that's ohm meters expressed in base units.